Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. This guy owes me a fishing trip. But today we're gonna move on. Let's go ahead and make another lure. I wanna make a glide bait, a big one. I'm really inspired by all you guys up in the Northeast, up in Jersey and everything, catching big stripers off the beach with big plugs and I'm totally jealous. And all I can do is just make lures that I probably never use. But this is gonna be fun. We're gonna get into a little bit of theory. We'll talk a little bit about what makes that lure glide and what makes it twitch off to one side. And hopefully we'll end up with a real nice lure. Stick around. All right, let's go to the dry erase board and I'll explain to you what I'm planning. Before I get to the drawing, we should talk a little bit about the material I'm gonna use. I wanna use a dowel because I'm gonna go ahead and make this on the lathe and there's no need to waste a bunch of material and time by starting with a big block of wood. So this is a one inch poplar dowel and it's the same dowel I made the little lollipop crankbaits out of and if you haven't made one of these, you need to free your inner child and make one of these things. They're really fun and they work. I'll put a link to the video in the description. So this wood isn't super dense, but it isn't a light wood either. So it's gonna give us some good heft so we won't have to add a bunch of weight, but at the same time, we'll have a little bit of leeway adding weight if we need to. It's gonna be seven inches long and I put the metric units up here too. It's gonna be seven eighths of an inch in diameter at its widest point and its widest point will be 25% back from the nose, which is an inch and three quarters. And I'm gonna have the tail blunted off. I don't want it to come to a point. So it'll be about a three eighths diameter sort of blunt end. So I've done videos before on what makes a lure wanna walk the dog or have a quick turn when you twitch the rod tip and what makes a lure wanna glide in a straight line. And it has to do with the arrangement of the center of drag and the center of gravity. But let's go ahead and draw a generic shape and then we'll talk about that. Now, since this is gonna be made on the lathe, it, this can be the side view or the top view or the bottom view, or it doesn't matter, it's gonna be cylindrical. So let's just go ahead and put an eye in here just to give us reference. So you can see this is a very aerodynamic shape. It's sort of torpedo shaped, and that's because there's very little drag, and that's what you want. You want this lure to feel whatever drag it's gonna have very near the tail. This blunt end helps a little with that. So the arrangement we want is the center of gravity and the center of drag arranged so center of gravity is forward and the center of drag is back. Figuring out where the center of gravity is, is real simple. That's just the balance point of the lure. But figuring out where the center of drag is a very complicated thing to do, but we can intuit just knowing a little bit about aerodynamics. So the flow of the water is gonna come over the body and stay pretty laminar, pretty much stuck to the body, at least a third of the way back with a shape like this. And as it goes along the length of the body and it passes the widest point, it's going to begin to become a little bit turbulent. And where that turbulence is, is where you're gonna have a lot of drag due to the water. So while we can't really define exactly where the center of drag is, we can pretty much guarantee that it's gonna be behind the wide point on the lure. And then by adding weight at or forward, of the wide point of this lure, we can kind of guarantee that we're gonna have some distance between the center of gravity and the center of drag. And that should guarantee a lure that wants to track straight. But here's the thing, it wouldn't be the engineered angler if we were just gonna build a straightforward lure and just repeat what other people have done. I wanna do something a little different because I don't want the lure to track perfectly straight. I want it to have a little bit of deviation so that its inertia carries it through an arc. So I wanna add a bow keel or a nose fin. Now what this will do is that any deviation that the lure feels moving forward, whether it's a little wave or the direction of your twitch, it'll arc in that direction and be carried by the inertia of the lure. But in the end, it's an experiment, so we'll see what it does. So before we go out to the lathe, I need something to guide me, some kind of drawing. And what I've done is I've taken a little piece of cardboard and made a half drawing and put some dimensions at key point, and I'll just take this and double stick it on my tool guide. This way I have it right in front of me as I'm shaping.
And as I go along and I need to measure the diameter at those key points, I'll use these little calipers and I'll use my ruler and that should have it. So I can afford to take it down just a little bit. I've got the shape that I had envisioned, but it's not all about what it looks like. Remember, form has to follow function. It's gotta work. The next step is to pause for a moment and let's do a little bit of calculating and figure out how much weight and where to put it. All right, so let's go ahead and get the weight of this thing. I'm gonna put this little piece of wire so it doesn't roll around on me and we'll zero it with the wire on there. And it's 36.04. Now I've already taken like a little sample and done the calculations for the density of this wood. And that density is 0.645 grams per cubic centimeter. If I divide 36.04 by 0.645, I get 55.9. So 55.9 is the volume, and we know that water weighs one gram per cubic centimeter. And so that means the lure has to weigh less than 55.9 for it to float. But I don't want it anywhere near 55.9. And in fact, I want it about 15% less than the maximum. So I'll take 55.9 times 0.85. And so that gives me 47 grams. So I don't want the lure to weigh any more than 47 grams. That's the weight of the body and all the hardware. But before I can finalize where and how much weight to actually add, I'm gonna go ahead and drill out the eye sockets and put in the hook eyes. And I'm gonna be using my typical twisted eyes, except for I'm using a heavier wire. This is 0.05 inch diameter and I'm trying to get in the deepest embedment I can and this is two inches. I'm going to try to get as close to two inches on all three eyes. So here we are with all the hardware here and it weighs out to 43.83. And my target was somewhere around 47 and a half, uh, not too much higher than 48. And I think this split shot brings us pretty much right on the money. 48.18, I'm gonna go with that. I don't want it much heavier, but I don't want it to bog down in the water. I want it to be on the water. So we're gonna go with that. I'm gonna drill this in. I'll seal that in and I'll recut the groove right into it. And I'm using some sawdust and the UV resin I always use. And that does a pretty good job. I just need to do a little sanding and cut that slot back in.
All right, I'm going to add a little bit of visual interest. I've drawn some little slanted lines right there on the eye so that I can make kind of a squinty eye effect. And I'm going to make some eyebrows with some of this JB Weld stuff. And a little bit of alcohol on your finger goes a long way to getting this smooth. When it's, once it's hard, I'll sand it down nice and smooth and make sure that it's nice and even on either side. All right, I've got this thing sanded down and looking pretty cool. Has a little bit of an attitude. And now I want to go ahead and mount the little skeg on here because I want it on there when I'm painting. Because I might allow a little bit of red transparent paint to get down on it. All right, I've got it on the holder and I'm going to put a really thin clear coat on it. We'll let it dry. I'll sand it lightly back and I think we'll be able to paint by then. All right guys, I just pulled this out of the turner and I think it came out pretty good. And I think those angry brows look kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna give it a light sanding and we'll get the painting. But as usual, I'm gonna go ahead and put down a base coat of opaque white. And because I'm gonna be a running extractor, we'll just have to have a little music and some voiceovers if we need it. I almost forgot the mask off the little fin. Here I put in a second layer of really fine mesh and I'm laying in some ragged lines and they'll barely show later on. And now I'm filling back in on top with the original transparent black. Now I'll use this transparent green as sort of a blending tone, sort of to pull all the colors together. The red on a chin is always the last touch. Time to decide what color eye to use, red or gold. I think I'm going to go with the red. I think that looks really cool. Well, I changed my mind on the paint scheme halfway through. A paint scheme that'll work on a small lure just won't work on a big lure. But I'm pretty happy with this. Kind of has a copperhead kind of look. I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, masking tape off and then I'll put a, a couple of coats of polyacrylic just as a mid coat to kind of seal the paint and get it ready for that final clear coat. Or at least a couple. All right, 
it's been about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And I gave it a lot of time because I put a big thick coat on there and it's a big lure. All right, I really like the way this thing looks. And those angry eyes, I think really give it a lot of character. All right, let's get it off this thing. I'm gonna put some hooks on it, drop it. Well, I don't even know if it'll fit in my float tank. It won't fit in my tank. We'll have to wait till we get down to the water. Let me go ahead and get the hooks on and I'll see you down at the dock. All right, you're gonna have to put up with a little bit of background noise. My neighbor decided to start mowing. So let's go ahead and throw this thing in the water. Sun's just going down over the trees and the water's calm. There's not much of a breeze. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. All right, before I go ahead and throw this in the water, I just wanna say if you're enjoying these kind of videos, give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, help me build this channel and subscribe if you haven't. And offer me some suggestions if there's something you wanna see. All right, let's do it. That's perfect. Definitely wants to glide. I have to say, I'm not really that happy with it. Okay, what I've done is bend that tie on eye down just a little bit because what I think is happening is this little chin fin is causing enough drag to sort of pull the head down just slightly into the water. And that's enough to kill the glide. I've tweaked this tie on eye down. Hopefully that'll give us a little bit of an upward angle on the pull and it'll defeat that drag. Let's be a little more aggressive. Let's get out there a little bit. Ooh, got a fish hit it. <laughs> Oh yeah, much better. Yeah, it, it's working much better. Oh yeah, if you're a little bit more aggressive with it, it does exactly what I expected it to. I'm pretty happy with it now. I think it looks good and I think it's gonna behave really well where I wanna fish it and that's out in the surf. So one more test, I wanna see how far I can cast it. Although I don't know that I have much line on this spool. Now I'm not gonna try my hardest, but let's see how far it'll cast. That's pretty damn nice. It actually casts tail first. Man, that alligator came out of nowhere. I don't wanna 